Okay, I think that's uh, the majority of people come on board. So, as I said before, very good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Justine Fosch and, and I sit on the Food and Drink Wales Industry Board. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the work that we do uh, shortly. Um, however, um, what I'd like to do just to kick off is to talk a little bit about our housekeeping rules. Um, so we really want this to be a very inclusive um, webinar, but it's difficult with such a huge uh, number of people. I think we've got about 90 people joining us here today. Um, so just a few housekeeping rules. Um, the team have made sure that all the microphones and cameras um, are switched off. So if you could keep them switched off, that would be great. Um, and that'll allow just the speakers to uh, to turn their mics on and um, and to be seen. Um, the um, if you have any questions, obviously we'd be delighted to take them. Uh, there's a chat function, so if you can uh, put your questions into the chat function, what we'll do is we will be looking at the the themes that are coming through, some of the questions, um, and we'll put them to uh, to the panel if you like um, when we when we have uh, time towards the end. There's some time being built in to answer some of your questions. Um, so this, this to be uh, to be clear, make sure you're on the right webinar. This webinar is in relation to the food and drink industry Welsh apprenticeship consultations. It's not about anything else. So hopefully you're on the right one. Um, and also just to say, this is primarily about reaching out uh, to businesses, to food and drink um, companies in Wales to get their views. So we're particularly keen to hear uh, views of the food and drink employers here today. Um, unfortunately, today we're not able to offer a Welsh uh, translation service. But there is uh, a transcript available if, if people uh, need it. Uh, Microsoft Teams has it inbuilt, so it's uh, easy to do. Um, and the webinar is also being recorded in the event that um, anybody wants to, to see it at a future date. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to move on now um, and just explain a little bit more about the work of the Food and Drink Wales Board. Uh, we were created really to support delivery of the action plan and provide industry leadership to help achieve industry growth. Um, we have a wide number of topics that we, we look at, but skills from the very start has been a core focus of the work of the board. Um, and we developed a document called Transforming Skills in the Welsh Food and Drink Sector, which outlined the four key areas of our work and apprenticeships was absolutely top of those. It's a key strand of the strategy. And one of our um, objectives is to ensure that employers are informed and that their voices are heard as we come through reform, uh, a period of reform. Um, currently, throughout um, apprenticeships throughout all sectors in Wales are being reformed, and it does include food and drink. And the purpose of this webinar is to provide the opportunity for food businesses to engage, find out more, and have their voices heard through the consultation that is now open. So today, I am delighted to uh, to to be joined by uh, two two very eminent speakers on the subject. Um, so I'm going to introduce firstly Louise Codling from the National Skills Academy for Food and Drink. And then I'm going to introduce Wayne Skoberg from uh, Welsh Government. Louise, would you like to just introduce yourself? Tell us uh, what's your name, where do you come from and, and what is it that you do? Um, I'm, my name is Louise Codling. I am um, Chief Executive of the National Skills Academy for Food and Drink. Um, I'm working very closely with the Welsh Government um, in their reform agenda on apprenticeships. OK, fantastic. And Wayne, are, Wayne, are you there? Are, are you able to uh, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about yourself? Hi, I'm Wayne Schoberg. I work in the Apprenticeship Unit uh, of the Welsh Government. Uh, I'm the Senior Apprenticeship Frameworks Manager, and my role is to oversee the development and reform of the apprenticeships in Wales. Fantastic. Thank you both. Uh, thank you both very, very much. So without further ado, I'm, I'm going to dive into the subject and um, to, to, uh, to help to try and understand a little bit more about um, about the consultation and, and where we are. So turning to you, Wayne, I wonder if you could explain what the background to the reforms of friendships are. Uh, what are the policy drivers? What's Welsh Government trying to achieve by reforming apprenticeships in Wales? Hi, um, our vision is to develop a responsive and resilient apprenticeship system that will support employers. We want to develop and deliver apprenticeships that are innovative and industry focused. The system needs to support economic growth, be responsive to the needs of the future economy and provide a range of skills that are that aid social mobility and ensure equality of opportunity. Back in 2017, the Welsh Government published um, its apprenticeship plan, uh, which was a five year plan. And part of that 
plan set out how we were going to reform our apprenticeship frameworks. We wanted to increase the school leavers into apprenticeships. We wanted to deliver more higher level apprenticeships and we wanted to get a more robust system and to establish a, a pattern and a program of getting responses from employers. And this is what we're trying to do now is to meet the needs of the employers of Wales through our apprenticeship system. We last year we we, cons we had two consultations to aid us in that. The first consultation was for the Welsh Government to take ownership of the issuing authority of the apprenticeship frameworks. And the second one was to look at the actual structure of the apprenticeship frameworks. And part of that was to move away from the current apprenticeship framework model to 23 sector frameworks and food and drink being one of those. Um, can I ask you, Wayne, perhaps, um, why was food and drink chosen to be one of those sectors? It, was there a recognition, dare I say, of the importance of food and drink in Wales? Yes, f uh, food and drink is one of the 23 sectors. We chose those which were a priority sector for Wales and those which we felt would aid the economy in Wales. Fantastic. Well, and, and that's really good to know. And I, I think it, um, I think it's great that the Welsh Government have recognised the importance, particularly food and drink manufacturing, to, to the Welsh economy. Um, it, it's a subject that's dear to our hearts uh, uh, on the board. Um, one of the things I'm interested in um, in Wales is what, what's the linkages to uh, the things like the Future Generations Act? And you mentioned about an inclusive uh, framework. Um, how important is that? Yes, we're, we're looking to, over, over time, look at the content of our our frameworks and to make them more inclusive, both gender wise and age wise and uh, bilingually. So we are looking not at the holistic approach to uh, uh, apprenticeships and as well as looking at uh, improving the content of the, both the knowledge and the, and the competency uh, el elements. We're trying to look at making our frameworks more occupational focused and go go towards higher levels and more technical uh, areas we're looking that a an apprentice has a apprenticeship progression pathway so they can see that they can start in the industry and see a a map a way through the uh, in industry through an, an apprenticeship pathway okay that and that's great so so in summary, what I'm hearing is I think that part of the aim of the, reform, uh, of the reform agenda is greater occupational focus, more robust, uh, more technically, um, con the more technical content, and then more closely meets the needs of in industry and employers as the customer and the, and the custodian, really, of apprenticeships. Yes, Perfect. that's right. Lovely. Um, I think that's really clear, so that's really helpful. Thank you. So. Um, what is the process that's being um, used to, to obviously you, you've got you've got frameworks that, um, that you want to reform. You've got an ambition to achieve um, quite a different future. Uh, what's the what's the process by which you're going through to reform reform apprenticeships? We are currently going through a three year uh, reform process. Why? By we are taking framework sector by sector. Um, and over the, the next three years, we will uh, review and reform those frameworks. Um, we do that by uh, commissioning development partners who will set up a steering group on the Welsh Government uh, behalf and to go through the four step process, which I think Louise is going to go in, into more detail later. But the fundamental part of our reform is the inclusion and engagement with employers and we put a lot of emphasis on actually meeting the needs of both the apprentice but also hearing the voice of, of the employers because at, at the end of the day it's the employer who's going to employ these apprentices and that's the way we want to, to take this forward. Fantastic so 
Um, so it's important that employers are very engaged in um, in, in the activity, and, um, and I'm sure Louise will come on to talk about how how employers can be um, how, how they can be involved and engaged uh, more in it. Um, so um, am I right in saying that um, in terms of the, the the partner that Welsh government are working with on the reform agendas, that's that's very much what the National Skills Academy for Food and uh, Drink are doing. So yes. uh, if I could turn to um, Louise then. Um, I, I suppose the big question is that there's a, an ambitious reform agenda that Welsh Government have got across all the different apprenticeships that exist. Um, uh, and, and clearly there's a need for that to um, apply into food and drink. So in, in terms of supporting the food and drink uh, industry, what, what experience have you got in this area uh, really of, of supporting apprenticeships? So we, National Skills Academy has had many years experience working in all four nations around development of apprenticeships, frameworks, national occupational standards. Um, as the Sector Skills Council for Food and Drink, it was our role to lead on the development of apprenticeship frameworks and standards across all four nations. Uh, previously, we were also the issuing authority for Wales, although Wales has subsequently taken on that role themselves, but we are still the issuing authority in, in, in um, the, the other nations. Um, and we were responsible for leading the development of all of the original Welsh frameworks and looking after the ongoing maintenance of those frameworks through um, uh, you know, working within the sectors and, and doing the work that we do. We, um, we also have been heavily involved in the England apprenticeship reform agenda um, facilitating a number of employer-led groups in the design and development of um, their new apprenticeship standards in areas such as food operations, food tech, bakery and engineering to mention but a few. In the last few years um, the process in the nations has changed significantly um, and we now have to submit um, um, a bid in, in to, to deliver these types of activities in a competitive tendering process um, and we've been successful in securing um, this part of the, the Welsh apprenticeship activity um, and other um, activity in food and drink across all of the other nations so I've um, been been a very very long time working in this arena and have some very experienced in-house personnel to help support that happen. It sounds like you've been, sounds like you've been busy <laughs> okay so um, tell us a little bit more about what's happened to date in terms of the reform. So, um, so Wayne's obviously engaged the uh, engage yourselves. Um, okay. Wants to achieve all of this ambitious program. Where are we now in the program? What's happening? Okay. Well, if Mark, if I could have a slide, the first slide, please, that would be quite helpful. So, it's it's important to understand that that you know the National Skills Academy are here to help facilitate Welsh government. Um, implement the reform process for apprenticeships that they want to do. So we follow the four step process that is very clearly laid out to us in the documentation as part of our submission. And then it, it, it's the document that we live and breathe by whilst we are um, leading on this process. And the first stage is planning. So we work closely with Wayne and his team to understand what they're thinking in this area, how we can bring that together, um, the direction of travel, um, what's working, what's not working, and looking at how those current apprenticeships are landing. Once the planning stage is through and we have an idea of how we want to approach the particular frameworks that we're reviewing, um, it, is, it is our role to help facilitate the setting up of a steering group. And the steering group is made up of various different people, employers, stakeholders, we have providers on it, we have Welsh nation support on it, and Welsh government are also on part of also part of that group to help ensure that it goes in the right direction and, and that the that the policy um, is always um, being you know, that, that they can make sure that policy is being adhered to as part of the steering group activity and just sort of steering us really in the right direction and making sure that we're we're not going too far outside the, the, the agenda. Um, the steering group really does the top level review of the particular framework or the particular area that we're looking at and makes its recommendations. And then we set up a series of employer workshops where we take it out to specific employer groups to look at 
recommendations that have been made by the steering group and then really get into the detail of what factors look like in terms of an apprenticeship. So we get into detail of um, the types of units, the types of technical skill and knowledge that they would like to see as part of it, what the direction of travel of the industry is, so it's reflected in the programme and the apprenticeship that's being developed. And with a high focus on occupations and technical skills and knowledge, um, with hopefully the output of being a better high quality apprenticeship product and programme of learning to support that product. Once those workshops have happened, we take that back to the steering group. We then collate all of the feedback and recommendations into a public consultation. And those consultations are available through many different um, ac access points. The Welsh Government have an access point. I know the, the uh, Food and Drink Board have also um, been um, making that available through some of their, their medias. And it sits on our website where employers can come on and give us feedback around the specific recommendations that are coming out of the steering group and the employer workshops around those particular programmes that we're reviewing at any moment in time. Once we have the feedback and the consultation, we will make some, some changes to, um, to it depending on what the feedback is. And sometimes that might be minor changes and other times it might be that we would relook at that again and take it back to our steering group for feedback. And we would then submit those recommendations into Welsh Government for final sign off. And once that's signed off um, and everybody's happy, um, it either remains as, as it is or, or there are minor changes made to it and then Qualifications Wales will step in and support the development of anything new that needs to be um, developed um, as part of the new apprenticeship that's been designed um, and help support um, the, the sector take that out to market in terms of its qualifications and, and how they're going to manage it from a Falls Wales perspective. Okay, and, and that sounds a fairly rigorous process from um, from start to finish in terms of uh, of um, getting a lot of feedback from your steering group early on, and then um, um, and then obviously getting feedback and amending it as you go. Um, yes. So so um, not many people, I think, possibly understand it, what an apprenticeship framework is. The fact that there's lots of different yes. subjects within it. There's almost like yes. apprenticeships within an apprenticeship. So. Yes. What, what, what's happened to date? What, what have we? Where are we in the process? Have you done any already? Have you got some to? Are you in the middle of them? What, what, what's the current situation? So the current apprenticeship frameworks allow employers to select from a huge, vast array of units, and it can be quite difficult for employers to navigate their way around the framework, particularly in understanding what's necessarily the best options for them, but also to understand when they're recruiting an apprentice that. What skills and knowledge do they have? Because the apprenticeships are quite huge, so they're quite difficult to navigate their way around. So part of um, the remit that, that we are working on is to sort of to, to, to be, make them a little bit more sophisticated in terms of how employers engage with them and allow them to engage with them in a, in a more proactive way where they understand exactly what they're doing, what units they're choosing and how they can work with these apprenticeships to deliver much more technical and higher quality program. Um, if you could put that slide up, Mark, that would be quite helpful, sorry. Um, uh, in the, is it coming up? Uh, yeah, thank you. So, so currently we've been working on the review of, of four different pathways, engineering and brewing. So food and drink engineering maintenance, which is a level three apprenticeship and brewing, um, which it was an existing program. Um, we also were re reviewed food manufacturing excellence at levels two, three and four and food industry skills at levels two and three. The first two, um, engineering, this was reviewed by the steering group very, very early on. It's a fairly new programme and nobody's actually been through and completed the whole programme yet. Um, so the recommendations from the sector group were, let's just leave it alone until we have a little bit more data. It's already a very technical programme. It was designed with occupations and roles in mind and um, really designed around the roles that are specific to engineering within the food and drink sector. So it already meets quite a, 
a lot of the new reform criteria um, and is and is and is getting very positive feedback from the employers that are engaged on it. So we made some, a, a very light touch review of that program. We went um, out to the employers that are engaged in the program um, and we worked with the college that are delivering that program. And we also did the public consultation to say, can we leave it as it is? Um, let's wait until we've had our first learners complete the program um, and, and let's see where we are then rather than mixing with tweaking with something when it's part way through its sort of pilot phase. Um, so Pembrokeshire College are delivering this and they're the first provider to take up the delivery of this apprenticeship. Um, and having spoken with them and um, all of the employers that are on the programme, the feedback on that is currently really, really positive. It's a really successful programme. So we are continuing to work with other providers to help drive demand for this programme more broadly across, across Wales. I think uh, it's, worth, it's worth saying, Louise, that that, uh, that programme was um, one that the board were very, very keen on. And I think at the last uh, skills summit we had in uh, in uh, in the Flandudno, I think we uh, we helped launch it. So it's really good to know it's do it's doing well and uh, and successful yeah. so far. Yeah. Both both provider and employers extremely happy with it so far. So it it, it would be a miss of us to sort of dive into that and start changing it without the knowledge of of, of its success. So the second um, uh, apprenticeship that we reviewed was brewing. Um, the existing brewing program was reviewed through the steering group and the beer and cider cluster. And the feedback was that they agreed it needed to be far more technical in its nature as the current framework, as with all of our frameworks, um, has a very large number of units that employers can select from, not all of which are brewing specific. So in essence, you could have um, a learner that goes through without doing very many technical brewing units. So they're very, very keen to ensure that, that, that some of the brewing technical units would be mandated as part of the new programme. Um, so we worked with them, we worked with the clusters, and we rebuilt the qualification to ensure that learners going through it had to do a number of specifically mandated brewing specific units to enable to demonstrate that they were working within that sector and gaining the right and appropriate technical knowledge and skills to call themselves a brewer. Um, so this has been through consultation, it's been through public consultation um, and the new qualification development is being facilitated by Qualification Wales currently. Um, and our understanding is that um, all of the feedback from the public consultation on, on that programme was extremely positive. Um, and certainly um, we, we've enabled, en enabled us to engage with a, a larger number of brewers that hopefully will decide to engage in that apprenticeship going forward. So very, very successful so far on those two particular um, programmes that we have reviewed. So they've been through, have they been through the full cycle, the one the one to four stages that you identified earlier? They've done, that's all been done? They have, yeah. So so they, you know, engineering was pretty simple. So it's, you know, that, that wasn't, that was, a, you know, it, 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 but, but again, it was still a good process to go through to make yeah. sure that, you know, that because we could have made the changes if we needed to and, and we did review it anyway. Um, but from a brewing perspective, I think we will, uh, the sector will end up with a really high quality apprenticeship program um, and it's just really now about making sure that brewers that consulted with us and engaged with us on it now actively you know, embark on using that program as an apprenticeship going forward. Okay excellent so, so yes so so that's so that's engineering and brewing um, and, and they mentioned food manufacturing excellence and fears and I think that's that's where we are now in terms of yes. Um, of the process and consultation. Yeah. So um, where are we with those? What, what's happening um, and, and what's the proposals that, that are in place for, for those? So with the food manufacturing excellence and food industry skills, we have been through the first two phases of our of the process. So we've done the planning phase, um, we've had the employer steering groups and we've had the working party group. So it's been through quite a few phases of that already. Um, and at the moment, it's we're at the public consultation stage. And obviously, there's been a number of things that have happened over the last few months um, that have impeded organisations and businesses engaging in this. So part of the reason that we're doing this today is to try and encourage more employers to become involved in 
not just you know, reviewing these particular apprenticeships, but also getting involved more broadly in the reform agenda. So food industry skills is the largest framework and the one that's most widely used by the food and drink sector. Um, it is, it, it is um, a generic, pr pretty generic framework that, and again, allows employers to select from a vast array of units, which again, you know, it's difficult to understand sometimes what particular framework and what skills you are developing. So with a focus on occupations and more technical content, the main role for the steering group with these two um, reviews was to try and determine which occupations and roles within the sector sat within the individual frameworks to enable um, them to ensure that they cover the right amount of knowledge and skills in the right areas and enable them to be developed much more closely around the roles that have been identified as linked to those. They're really important frameworks um, as they're very widely used um, and these are the ones where we can start to develop um, more technical operational skill um, and, and keep in, in line with the future of the food and drink sector, which is moving more towards automation and high tech factories and the technical skills that are needed to develop, to deliver um, you know, the, the food and drink agenda need to be within these, these frameworks um, in terms of operations and technical capability. Okay, so um, so with that with that in mind, um, you've got you've got obviously the the um, the reforms that you've looked at. You've got some consultations out, um, and and you've got the level two and the level three um, yeah. works in in play. Yeah. Okay. So if if I talk about it, is if for, for food manufacturing excellence, it's best to sort of put them all together. Um, the, the apprenticeship is focused on quality and improvement and the steering group were really found it difficult to determine which occupations sat within that specific framework. Um, they, it, and we, 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 we were unable to determine that this met the criteria that was being set in terms of identifying the roles and the occupations. And, and at these particular levels, the steering group didn't believe that there were roles within organisations that were specific to this type of apprenticeship. It was agreed that elements of all of the apprenticeships needed to include parts of what's in the FME framework, so things like continuous improvements and quality and, and, and asset care. However, it wasn't a role in its own right at that level. Um, and that elements of those should be taken and used in the other apprenticeships rather than having that as a framework in its own right. Also, the numbers at level two and three um, for the food manufacturing excellence um, apprenticeship are very, very low. Um, and, and most providers are delivering it, but they're not delivering it as an apprenticeship. They're delivering it as a standalone course or qualification. Um, and this will still be able to access by employers and providers as a standalone qualification. But as an as a um, as an apprenticeship framework, it does not meet the criteria of the occupations. It's more elements of a role rather than being a role in its own right. So the recommendations from the steering group for food manufacturing excellence are that levels two and three be the best bits of levels two and three get incorporated into other apprenticeship standards and it is not any more a standalone program. Um, and however, the group were able to identify an occupation for a quality and improvement role at level four. Okay. So the level four um, apprenticeship will remain or the recommendations are that it will remain and we may put that into the food industry skills framework so you have levels two three and four um, or it may stand alone that's yet to be determined but as a standalone occupation we were able to identify somebody at the level four role um, so therefore that that occupation and that framework will re it's recommended that it will remain so that's food manufacturing excellence so food and drink industry skills level two, um, the recommendations coming out of the group were that this should be split into operational and sales service areas. At the moment, all of the units are together within one qualification. So it's quite difficult, again, for 
to understand you know, whether you're dealing with somebody in operations or whether you're dealing with somebody um, that is doing sales and service or working in the sales and service areas. And the manufacturing um, elements of it needed to be pulled out more and the sales and service side of it also needed to be pulled out more. So many of the roles covered by this framework, the employers felt a split would identify the roles better in between manufacturing and sales and service. So the recommendation for FIS at level two is that the qualifications are redeveloped, but with specific mandated areas to cover compliance, technical knowledge and skills, then with a se separate set of units to cover the specific areas that they're working in, and then and some softer skills, and then also a group of principles of knowledge skills, which are the deep dive into the knowledge that's required of the particular occupations. So. Um, that's the recommendations coming out of that group. So it's, it's quite a big change um, and it does allow um, uh, businesses to focus on operational people in a different way and have a more specific set of units that they pick from um, and having to select a, a manda mandated set of units within compliance and technical, ensuring that the agenda is met, that the, the the um, apprenticeship do have a more technical focus. So you will see more technical units being mandated as part of the qualification. Um, and in fact, you know, the employers and Welsh Government have been very flexible around what can be included within the apprenticeship. So you, we could include just a knowledge certificate if the employers felt that that was going to be useful. We could blend it into, um, you know, the, the competency program. So there's real lots of different ways that employers can approach and take a view on some of how they are developing these new programs to deliver what they're requiring in terms of technical skill going forward. Okay. So that's that, that's the level twos. OK, so on level two, so if I if I try and um, summarise what I think I, I heard, so what you're saying is, in, in essence, this sounds the, the, the food industry skill sounds like it's being sort of split. Um, and, and there'll be a sort of an operations one focusing on food manufacturing factories and, and activities within there and then another one which is looking at sales and service but essentially it sounds to me like um, the, the, the whatever's in there now in terms of units will, will either probably be in one or the other or, or, or will, they, will it be very very different. It, it will be in one or the other um, and there will be some that will be uh, you'll be able to share across them when you're talking about some of the softer skills but the sales service will sit separately to the manufacturing operations so that you if you're an employer recruiting somebody that has conducted that apprenticeship it will quite clearly say that it was the manufacturing pathway or the sales and service pathway so you you know what you're getting when you when you recruit and you know as an employer when you're looking at it which is the most appropriate route for your learners to take yeah yeah and i would i would imagine that that um that at level two quite some some of the level two skills that we see are are quite uh, they're not all automated it's, it's quite they can be quite manual even even some craft skills i noticed there's questions around about sort of some of the the craft skills i'm does, are they included in that? Would they be in the operations route way or in the sales and service? Or well, the craft the craft frameworks are separate to this particular framework. So this is really about manufacturing operations. So if you were training to, to, to be a butcher, you would do the the, the meat and poultry um, pathway rather than this, unless the majority of your role was an operator with a little bit of craft knowledge. In which yeah. case you would contextualize how you're delivering that program. So big, big operator, little butcher, or big butcher, little operator would sort of determine whether you went a craft route or whether you went through um, an, an operational route. So it is designed particularly to look at, you know, operational roles within within the manufacturing environment. There will be some technical elements in it, but it won't be uh, as technical as, as a level three qualification where the, the, the capability requirements will be higher. OK, so on level three, then level three is a step up. It's a it's yep. a sort of similar environment as manufacturing environment. Yep. It's a it, it's a step up in terms of um, I'm guessing autonomy, um, yep. you know, potentially technical requirements in terms of first line maintenance and things like that is is that what we're trying to get at to here some of those more automated plants or yeah so the, so the steering group identified the main occupation for this level would be a technician 
So that could be a technical operator, it could be a multi-skilled operator. We had lots of different job roles within this particular occupation that came out, but it did require um, an, an element of multi-skilling. Um, they wanted to include things like asset care, they wanted to include um, you know, um, some high, higher level technical skill in, around quality and science. So sort of a real different approach to um, you know, what the future role of the operator is likely to be and, and already is in a lot of the organisations that we spoke with. And um, to, to achieve that, um, there, you know, currently the framework has no requirement for technical units. You can you, you can pick and choose from all of the units that are there and, and you know, and they're all at a level three, but you could do some that aren't relevant to a more highly skilled role. So the recommendations from the group were that there were some mandated technical units that the learner must do at that particular, if they do this particular qualification. And the, the new framework should offer, you know, a really sufficient level of technical units to help develop the operators of the future for the businesses, where things like automation and high tech operations will require, um, will require more highly skilled technicians. And we've seen this as a pattern um, across all of the nations, wanting to have more technician level roles within their, um, within, within the food manufacturing environment to enable them to future proof um, you know, th their operations going forward. So this is this is a theme that we see across all of the nations looking for more technician type apprenticeship programs. Okay, that's really helpful. So that, I think that was a very thorough kind of um, review of all of that. So um, quite 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 complex but i think i think the the um the changes are 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 going to speak for themselves really um i think one of the um presumably you've had you've been out to consultation um have you had feedback already what's the general consensus been from the feedback that you've had to date so so it's out for public consultation at the moment and i know that mark and, and um we'll share all of the links to that later so that everybody can go on and involved in it. generally the feedback is very positive so including the steering groups, the working groups and the online consultation, we've had we've had over 20 responses to the level two operations programme. Um, so the respondees are a mixture of employers, um, providers and awarding organisations. Um, generally, the employers are all happy with the proposals, with a few recommendations for enhancements that have been made. Um, they certainly understand that the proposed changes will start to deliver significantly better and more technical apprenticeships. And I, and I think that they're, they're, they're very happy to sort of go along with the reforms and, and, and try and generate, be involved in the design and development of something that's quite exciting. You know, so, some, some organisations are less keen on the reforms um, and, you know, that will take a little bit more work. Um, but I think the employers are keen to improve the quality of both the frameworks and the training that's provided as part of the apprenticeship framework. So and from an employer's perspective, the feedback has been extremely positive. Okay, and, and, and uh, as I should have said, presumably at the, be at the beginning of this, um, really one of the purpose of today is to make sure that we get as much feedback as possible um, from employers, because that's, uh, that's who this is primarily aimed at. And I think, um, uh, and, and I think the consultation, um, I know Mark put the details up uh, on the slide earlier, um, and I think you'll put them in the chat if people are, uh, well, hopefully people will be uh, encouraged to go and have a look at them in more detail um, and, yeah. and, and get involved. Um, j just a very quick question really to, to Wayne, who, um, uh, who's obviously the, the uh, architect of, of much of this. Um, does it sound to you like the, the reforms, that the, the kind of design that's coming up, the feedback from employers, that it's heading in the right direction? Yes, um, we are looking from a policy, policy perspective for more high level frameworks, more technical frameworks, more occupational focused frameworks. So it's going in the right direction, yes. Perfect, Perfect. that's really good. Um, okay, so um, so I was going to say your job's almost done, the consultation, <laughs> hopefully, uh, get more, more, more involved, uh, more involvement from people and then uh, and then these two frameworks uh, or, or, or pathways rather will be, will be done. What's yep. next? Is, is, there, is there any more or, um, yep. or what's, what's, what's yet to come? Okay, Mark, if I could have the, my final slide, please. Um, so the public consultation on food manufacturing excellence and food industry skills is being extended and it is open until the 30th of September. The links are here and I know that they will be 
um, uh, circulated post this post this meeting as well. And it's very important from a Welsh government perspective that the employers' voices are heard. So please please go on and complete the, the, the consultation. If you need any more information about anything that I have spoken about, then do feel free to contact either myself or Matt at the National Skills Academy. Um, the next phase of the reform agenda is already coming quickly and fast at us. Um, and, and in early Octo October, we will be beginning to conduct the review for the next phase of the food and drink reviews that are happening. So um, meat and poultry, bakery, fish and shellfish, fresh produce and dairy are the next five um, pathways that we will be looking at. So at the pit, so if I, I understand just seeing somebody might have put something in about craft, and these are the ones to get involved in when you want to look at craft, and certainly um, do feel free to contact us if you'd like to get involved. We are in the process of the planning phase at the moment with Wayne and Welsh Government, um, but we sort of know the process. So we, in the background, we are trying to already set up some working parties in the specific subsector areas um, and taking them through. And we've had really, really good interest in this already. So um, anybody working in those, those sectors that would like to get involved in helping shape what those apprenticeships look like going forward, then please do get in touch with us and we'll ensure that you're included in all of the information and meetings that we have going forward. So, um, so, so in, as well as filling in the um, consultation for this set of um, apprenticeships, people can actually get involved in the can they get involved in the steering committee or the or being a part of the employer group or what, what what's oh, all of that? So, so we, we we will take uh, you know it would be great if we could have you know, the the steering group was set up to to do FME and FIS. So as now we will look to in, to to look at who which employers we need on the steering group now as well, so that we make sure that we've got good representation. Um, across those sectors and then subsector groups that will look at the individual pathways independently. So um, in the world of Zoom and Microsoft Teams, um, we might find bringing some of those employers together far easier, um, particularly with the geography like of Wales. Um, it will be, you know, we'll, we are going to do it in short, sharp sessions rather than big, long, all day sessions. So we, we have a plan and if somebody would like to get involved, just let us know and we'll, we'll ensure you are. Okay. So, so what I'm hearing is a very open process, so, so um, people who want to be involved, um, and it's great, there's, there's so many here today, it'd be great to get in contact and, um, and get involved with you for either the existing ones or the craft ones. Uh, bring, yeah. um, and my big bold letters here say to everybody on the, on the call, so if you're an employer, please make sure that you get involved. Uh, fill in the consultation by the 30th of September um, and get in touch with Louise if you want to be part of the steering group or get involved in any of the future activities because uh, back to Wayne's point, this is an, you know it's really important that we get as many employers as possible feeding into this and and, and being informed and supporting, or on the other hand, um, you know challenging if they think it's it's not right because th th this this framework doesn't belong to uh, doesn't belong to the NSA doesn't belong it doesn't belong to Welsh government but but really it belongs to the employers and so that that's why the the call out is is so in, important. Um, so I think uh, we've we've got about uh, 10 minutes left. So um, I had a couple of questions that were sent in from people who couldn't come. Um, and also I've been uh, looking at the chat information on um, on the uh, that's been coming through. So there's a couple of things I just want to touch on, if that's all right. Um, so some of the questions um, earlier on uh, that we were asked um, were, were around about um, uh, what so and, and I think maybe Wayne or maybe Louise, either of you. Um, uh, when will all this be completed? Was one of the questions I had uh, I had asked because obviously it's a it's a rolling program. Um, is there an end in sight for a, a situation where the food industry can say we've got all of our apprentices have all been reformed? There's no more change because um, we all know that change breeds instability. It's difficult for you know, the whole supply system that has to deliver apprenticeships to, to gear up for that. So do we have a do we have an idea of when of when the end of the reforms might happen? Probably a Wayne question, I think, maybe. <laughs> um, yeah, we're quite far advanced with the food and drink framework. So we're looking for it to, to be completed any time between next March and next summer. Um, we would then like to hold it for two to three years 
before we do any more reviews. That's the plan. But obviously, if something changes, if something new comes along, then we are at liberty to review them at any time. But we're trying to make them a bit future proof so yeah. they can so that they can remain there for a number of years. What we don't want to be doing is reviewing every six months. Um, but then we don't want to review and leave it there for five or six years. So we're looking at about a three year standstill with the opportunity to review it if the sector so desires. So if some new new technology comes along and that needs to be embedded into the pathway, then there's the opportunity to do that. So we'd like it to be robust and stable, but we'd like it to have the opportunity as technologies come on board to to slip those into the framework at a quite easy way. So two one, yes, we'd like it to remain stable, but we'd also like to up update it as and when required. Okay. Okay, that was really helpful. So, and, and I think, uh, and I, I suspect a, a period of time to enable it all to bed down and see how it's going um, sounds like a, a very sensible idea. So, um, a couple of questions that have, have also been raised along the way. So, there was a question around about um, the makeup of the steering group. Now, um, who, who, who's, who, who's involved in the steering group? Who sits around it? Um, are they Welsh? Um, and do they work in Wales? Um, so, um, I think I'm, I'm right in saying that the makeup of the steering group is suggested by you Wayne and then it's and then it's uh Louise you you kind of yes. recruit is that right so what Wayne what's the makeup of the theory yeah in, in these the we've we've issued guidance on who we expect to be on a steering group so on a steering group we would expect um industry and sector representation yeah. we would expect employers we would expect an awarding body or a body, awarding body representation. We would expect qualification Wales. We would expect training provider representation and where appropriate trade union representation and also Welsh government policy and apprenticeship representation. So, so that that is the, the guidance we then handed over to our development partner to put that uh, steering group to, yep. uh, together and somebody from Welsh Government sits on, on, the, on the steering group and we have suggested um, people to come onto the steering group just to make sure that there's a fair a balance. What we, what we would like to have with the employers is a representation from across Wales. So yep. uh, somebody from north, somebody from south, a large employer, a small employer, so we're trying to get um, a balance and a fair representation of the employers. Um, we also get in contact with F FSB and CBI who are on our advisory board uh, and they oversee this as well to make sure that because um, we one of the original criticisms we had of the development was that um, the same two or three <laughs> employers were asked to be on on the steering group every single time. And so we were only getting the views of a limited number of employers. So we're trying to be much more transparent and get a much wider range because we want the apprenticeship to be appropriate for not only for large employers, but also for SMEs as well. OK, perfect. Thank you. So, uh, so Louise, in terms of the uh, the steering group that you have, I think, um, have you got a, so presumably it's chaired by somebody and uh, so, so um, have you got sort of have you got people from Wales there? Have you got representation from the key people that are required? Yes, yeah, so so we, it, it's chair it's chaired by by an employer. We have a number of providers on it. Um, Coles Wales is on it, so they look after um all of the that that side of it for us. Obviously, um, somebody from Wayne's team sits on it. Um, uh, it's difficult to get some of the smaller providers, smaller employers, to come to the meetings. Which is why I think going forward, um, we'll have we will be able to roll that out to quite a few of the SMEs that we already work with, um, and um, and uh, you, 
So, so we 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 hit most of that, but we certainly hit that when we get out into our um, working parties too. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's a couple of questions questions being raised about uh, can people see the makeup of the steering group? Can they see the terms of reference? Um, I, I've seen them on your website, I think, um, in Welsh government, so they're they're free published. But we can certainly send over or get uh, linked up to um, to who's in the steering group and the terms of reference. So I don't think that's there's nothing. There's nothing secretive in any of this. It's a very open process. I, under, I think that's right, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Good. So yeah, not, not a problem. So um, so everybody can can uh, can see who's involved. And this and this is very much you know the, the purpose of doing this is everybody on this call you know has a has an interest in the food and drink sector. We'll have contacts. We'll be working with employers. Might be an employer. Uh, might be supporting employers. And um, and and I think the whole point of having the steering group as 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 certainly I think when you explained it to me is that it's that reach out that everybody has. Um, throughout Wales to get as many different businesses involved. Um, how, how has COVID affected the ability to engage um, kind of with, with employers? Would, would you often, would it be something that you'd want to do kind of face-to-face -face or one-to-one? -one? How has that, how has it helped or hindered? We have changed our guidance um, because initially the steering groups were face-to-face -face and we had face-to-face -face workshops. Now due to COVID everything is Microsoft Teams, Skype, and what we're finding is we are getting a more representation because people don't have to travel, they can just, um, so yeah, so we are finding, we are getting more varied take up as well due to this, but everything is going to be virtual for the foreseeable future. Okay, it's even easier for people to get involved in here, and you don't, you don't have to travel any, to be involved in this, you can, you do it from the comfort of your own desk at home. I, th I think it would be much easier. We've been doing some research last week um, with around all of the businesses that we've been working with, um, and a lot of that was Wales focused. And um, you know, if, if we are able to run them much more re remotely, we will have a lot more businesses that will want to get involved in both the steering group and and the working party. So I think it will be a, bit, a much richer experience going forward. Excellent, good. Um, so my final question really um, is, is to Louise and, and, and to Wayne is, is there more that the Food and Drink Wales board can do to support you? Um, ha, has this been helpful? Uh, should we do more, more like this? Um, and, and what else could we do to help you? Me? <laughs> From a board perspective, I think, you know, it, you've been incre incredibly supportive. And I also think that, you know, raising the profile of some of the work that we're doing, I think it would be really good to do a session with employers about what friendships are um, and, and you know, how, how they have been engaging with them and how easy, how they can access them. I think that might be quite helpful. Um, but I think, you know, anything that you can do to help support getting the message out about being involved um, and, and taking part in all of this work would be Anything that you can do in that area would be very helpful. Yeah. And similarly, Wayne, anything else that you can think of, or, or, or is that is that helpful? I think, yeah, that's very helpful. It's it's the communication and representing the industry. Um, be on on this on this Stephen group, and just get the help us with the communication because the more we communicate, the more f feedback we get the more people get involved because the apprenticeships are for the the apprentices and the em, employers. Those are our end users. Yeah. And yeah. um, I, I guess I guess at this particular period in time where where um, where the industry, well, well the, the whole economy has gone through quite a shock in terms of um, in terms of lockdown, in terms of COVID, um, that, that there's even more incentive to try and support younger people into work. Um, I think all the evidence suggests it's younger people who are being hit most by um, the current economic situation. So, um, and, and whilst I know apprenticeships aren't just for young people, but I think um, it's a, it's a great opportunity for employers to to think about how they can you know, how they can be part of supporting uh, people coming into our industry because we do know we have a shortage, um, and uh, and and it was ever thus. So hopefully, you know, um, new new apprenticeship uh, frameworks that are rigorous and robust. That give them a great career you know there's even more incentive for young people to hopefully come and come and join our industry um so um so in terms of final questions really i think um i think that um uh one question 
which I think is often the case. There's a lot of really good work is done on apprenticeships uh, in terms of reform and everything. But, uh, but in terms of uh, uh, communicating the end result of it, the fact that there's a new apprenticeship launched, um, I, I, know, I know quite often it's not something that the Welsh Government do with a, with a, a flurry, is, is announce to the whole industry that there's a, a new apprenticeship. And I'm just wondering if that's something that we could maybe help with in terms of also celebrating when the new, when the new improved frameworks are available, um, perhaps, uh, perhaps raising profile, celebrating, um, yes. you know, people more aware of of those. I think could be something that um, that we could certainly help with. Yes, that that would be great. Okay, good. There's one final, I've just a final question um, coming in around about the uh, the role of the regional skills partnerships. Um, so I think it'd be interesting, um, Wayne, just for you to give a, a kind of a very quick summary, if you're able to, of, of their their role. Um, they've obviously been around for a number of years now, and um, they have a, a particular role in the um, uh, in in um, in the landscape. Um, and and then perhaps um, Louise mentioned just whether it, how, how involved um, your team have been. I think there've been meetings between uh, the regional skills partnership, some people there, but be uh, be useful just to to talk about engagement with them. So Wayne, do you want to just comment on um, on who they are and what their role is. Yeah, the, we have um, regional skills partnerships across Wales and they feed the Welsh Government or advise the, the Welsh Government on labour market in, intelligence. We have uh, in Wales the Wales Apprenticeship Advisory Board, which advises the Welsh Government on what frameworks to uh, develop, what frameworks to review. And on the, what we call the WAB, there, there is a representation from the Regional Skills Partnership. So the Regional Skills Partnerships are an integral part of the Wales Apprenticeship Advisory Board. And, and they then advise the Welsh Government and health, the Welsh Ministers on uh, developments going forward within apprenticeships. Fantastic, yeah. So, and, and I think from memory, um, I, I think if I'm right in saying that there are, uh, of, of the three of them, I think two of them have food manufacturing as a priority sector, um, and I think one of them has food as, as a, within an advanced manufacturing definition, I think, of a priority sector. So again, it's it's quite quite good to see um, and, and I think um, I think uh, I've, I've been to a meeting with James from the National Skills Academy. I think where uh, uh, we were talking to one of the uh, regional skills partnerships about reflecting the importance of food and drink. Yeah. Um, so I, um, I think I think that was probably early early last year that happened. So um, so yeah, I think it's 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 important that there's representation within the industry on on all of these um, all of these places to make sure that we are uh, we, we're recognised for the importance that we are. I'm very conscious of the time. It is now one minute to uh, to three. So uh, if nothing else, I should I should finish on time. Um, I'd just like to say a huge thank you to uh, both Wayne and Louise for their time um, and for um, uh, giving us such a, a, a really helpful overview of the reforms. Um, I will stress again, it, it's it's your uh, your frameworks, your apprenticeships, employers. Please do get involved um, and join in the consultation. Um, just on my behalf, I'd like to say a huge thanks to the team at Welsh Government who help organise uh, these chats. They're doing a, a fantastic job. I think Wales is incredibly lucky, actually, to have a uh, to have a, n not just a skills division that really understands the importance of food and drink, but a, a food division that uh, really goes out of its way to help uh, to, uh, to help um, inform employers and, and 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 make a difference. So a uh, huge thanks to the team, Mark in particular, and Gwen and others uh, for for putting this together. Um, and a finally, a thank you to all of you for attending. Um, I know this is it's quite a detailed subject, so thank you for sticking with it as well for, for the duration of time. Um, and hopefully look forward to seeing you on another webinar at another time. So thank you very much. Um, have a great rest of the day and goodbye.